for the athlete that comes, who's like, Hey, you know what? I, I need more glute, um, or I need more specifically, I need more glute meat. I need more glute max. Um, you take a look at their programming. Maybe it is sound, but they're not able to get a good mind muscle connection. They're not, they're going into the workouts. Maybe they're, they're getting something that resembles a pump. Um, what is your diagnostics? What's your approach to troubleshooting that complaint? So this is a, this is actually something I have never shared on any podcast. I, the amount of podcasts that I have covered when it comes to glute training, I could not believe that I have not shared this. Like I was thinking about it earlier and I was, I couldn't believe these are things that I'm touching on in my check-ins very frequently. And now I'm finally putting out into the public. So anyone who is listening, get out your notepads. This is going to be tremendously helpful, potentially for you, or if you're a coach yourself, tremendously helpful for your clients. So what I do here is that we actually need to pay very close attention to the feet when we're going through movements that are going to be training the glutes. Because what is often the case for individuals who have not had maybe a ton of resistance training, or um, you see this often just with females in general, is that they're going to have a higher arch to their foot. And so when they're going through these movements, whether it be the RDL or it be squat variations, a lot of the weight is going to be sitting through the outer portion of their foot and through their heel. And what this is going to create is going to be external rotation of the pelvis, but also external rotation of the um, upper leg as well. And so by having this position, we don't allow for the glutes to be in the most leveraged position to be able to contribute to the hinge or contribute to the squat action. And so as we're lowering through the weight, we want to be able to have that internal rotation to the pelvis and have our weight be more centered over the mid sole or more to the inner portion of our foot. Not so much that we're just like rolling onto the inside of our foot, but we want to have more of that weight on the inner portion of the heel and then more on the, the ball of the big toe. Like that's going to be two contact points. And how you can tell if this is someone who is struggling with this is that you can take a video just directly in front of them, being able to see from the floor to above their head have them go through a squat. If they are squatting and you see that their big toe is lifting off of the ground and their weight is transferring to the outer portion of their foot, this is probably a sign that this is what they're struggling with and feeling like, man, I'm not getting a whole lot of glute. My adductors are contributing, my quads feel good, but I'm not getting a whole lot of my glute. And so that's going to be a test there. You could also do this through the RDL, the same setup for the video. And so you want to think about having that weight more to the inner portion of the foot and drills that I will utilize if a client is struggling with this is that I will have them um, get to a uh, squat rack and just have a post. It can be any post, but a squat rack is just the most general for everyone to be able to utilize. So you have that leg forward and you're going to set yourself up in a stationary lunge. So you have the post on the side that the leg is forward and then you're going to have weight in the other hand. It doesn't have to be heavy. This is more of a drill rather than it being like, this is how I'm gonna grow my glutes today. This is kind of getting warmed up. And so you'll have the weight in that hand and you'll hinge at the hip and then squat down into that lunge. And you just want to be able to create great tension uh, in the glute and then making sure that the weight is on the inner portion of your foot and really you know, be cognizant of pushing that arch of your foot into the ground and then being able to drive out of that, not standing up with your chest, but being able to push through that lunge. That is one drill there. And then if the client is still having a little bit of issues, what I'll have them do is get on the ground and do a glute bridge from the floor. I'll put a, uh, either like a, a yoga block or like one of those small, I don't know, like, Lifetime Fitness has these. They're like yeah. small gray balls that are not, <laughs> they're not like overly well aired up, but you can add a little bit of pressure between the knees. And so then you'll place the yoga block or the small gray ball in between the knees and then go through the glute bridge and make sure that we're really driving through the inner portion of the foot and not getting into extension of the lower back and really seeing hip extension transpire. Because if we're seeing the extension through the lower back, then that's just going to be the compensation for the hip extension that you're not able to get to or you're getting outside of your active range of motion. So those two drills alone will help tremendously. And then also just being cognizant of how you're getting pressure through your foot. and 
something to expand on that is that you're not going to be in a spot where now you're not having any pressure on the outer portion of your foot. We want to have pressure throughout the entirety of the foot, but we do want to have a little bit more of that being placed towards the inner portion of the foot specifically. I love it. I really hope that listeners took notes to that because the concept around like early bikini training, the bikini building and bodybuilding, that um, was something that was really, I drilled home for myself is keep all of the weight in your heels. If you want glutes, if you want to reduce quad activation, uh, it's just all in the heels, super wide stance on the leg press, go as high as you can and just the far upper outer corners and just stay there. And that's your range of motion because of your division. And, um, for myself, what I've experienced is focusing on, um, more of a neutral stance and full foot pressure uh, that has been incredibly helpful in keeping my center of mass uh, where I want it to be in these movements. Um, another another thing that I feel like is, is good for listeners to at least take note of is um, just looking at their pelvic stability throughout these compounds. Um, if full foot pressure, if that's an area that they've checked off, if that's something that, you know, they can say, okay, that that's still, that's I'm, I'm where I need to be. Um, just taking a look at the lumbar and considering whether or not we're actually starting and maintaining a neutral spine throughout the movement. Um, I think oftentimes we forget that our lumbar is going to follow our C-spine. So if you are in that hip thrust, which we see, I mean, I, I see weekly from clients checking in is okay. Like this is how I've been doing hip thrust. I can do a lot of weight, but, um, I'm not really feeling my glutes. I mean, it may be at a high enough volume, um, which ties into our next question, but really assessing and encourage athletes in video form to double check, um, from head down to the hips, what is happening. And if any portion of that is, uh, becoming looser is becoming relaxed. It's going to be really difficult to activate the glutes. And particularly if we're talking about a squat and RDL, um, you're likely going to be recruiting secondary muscles. And, um, eventually, even if you manage to push yourself, um, f- through a, a, a program through a phase, um, without proper form, you're going to hit that bottleneck where, uh, that pelvic stability is, uh, truly limiting. 